All right, you guys, today we're going to be looking at section 2.6, special functions. So um, basically, we're going to be doing a lot of graphing today. Uh, I know some of you, graphing isn't your favorite, but the good news is we're graphing lines today. So as we continue on to piecewise functions, um, the big thing to point out is piecewise functions. I'll actually underline this for you. Piecewise defined functions are two or more expressions, AKA parts of lines. We're gonna say mostly parts of lines. We could graph parts of parabolas or parts of polynomial functions. They are parts of functions. We're gonna, again, identify mostly with lines. So we're just gonna jump right into this. Um, and we're gonna start with method one. This might be the easiest for you as far as things go. So method one is my graph the whole line then erase is kind of what this method is. And what you wanna do is graph the line negative one half x plus four, okay? So normally I'd go up to four, one, two, three, four. I'd graph it and then my slope is down one over two, down one over two, or I can go up one and to the left too. So there is my line in blue. At this stage, we then need to account for our domain restriction. That second piece is where that graph or where that line actually occurs. And if you notice, it says where X is less than negative four, okay? Where X is less than negative four. So then what I do is, I go to where x is negative four, which is gonna be right here. I'm gonna put an open circle, noting the sign in my domain restriction, it's an open circle. And I'm gonna keep everything to the left of that line. And I'm gonna erase everything that's greater than negative four, okay? We're gonna repeat the process with our second line. If you notice, Remember, f of x is like y, okay? So essentially, we have the line y equals 2. y equals 2 is a horizontal line. I'm going to graph over the entire domain, and then I'm going to look at my restriction, okay? It says from negative 4 to positive 2. So negative 4, notice I'm going to have a closed circle there, and at positive 2, I'm going to have an open circle. Then I'm going to get rid of everything else I don't want. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my third line. So we have negative four is my slope, or negative four, sorry, is my y-intercept. My slope is positive three, up one over three, up one over three, then we need to account for our domain restriction, which is X is greater than two, okay? X is greater than or equal to two rather. All right, at this stage, we're gonna keep everything that's greater than two. I'm gonna erase everything that's less than. If you notice at two, two, we have a closed circle and an open circle together. Closed always trumps an open circle, okay? So if you have two points that coincide, it's going to appear closed. It's a good thing to kind of keep in mind into the future. Then at this stage, we can just state our domain. Well, if you notice, we have values that are less than negative four. We have values that are at negative four to positive two, and then we have values that are bigger than two, which means my entire domain is covered. My graph goes left and right forever, and there's no breaks in my picture. Range is gonna be a little different. So when I look at my Y values in my graph, I notice that Y values are always going to be, whoops, not less than or equal to, greater than or equal to two. You notice our lowest point here on our green is at two, and then that goes up forever. There are some repeats between the blue and the green expression. That is A-OK. -okay. All Y values are covered from two on up, okay? Now I'm gonna go into method two, which is just graph the corresponding parts. 
And for you, um, for those of you that are really good and consistent with um, graphing lines, this might be the easier method. So here, that's kind of our starting point. I know I'm gonna have an open circle at negative four, what? Well, I'm gonna plug in negative four to my equation. So negative four times negative one half is positive two. Two plus four is six. So at negative four, six, I'm gonna have an open circle, okay? I know by my domain restriction, I care about values that are less than negative four, so I'm going to the left, and my slope is negative one half, all right? So if I'm going to the left and my slope is negative one half, I wanna make sure I go up one over two. There we go. Next portion of the line, is a horizontal line at two between four and two. So I'm gonna put a closed circle at negative four, positive two. I'm gonna put an open circle at two, two. And then we have that horizontal line to connect the two. The last portion here is our three X minus four. Notice we have a closed circle at two something. So I'm gonna plug in a two, three times two is six, six minus four is two. So I have a closed circle at two, two. And this time my X values are greater than two. So I wanna go to the right from this point and I'm gonna to go to the right with a slope of three. So I go up one over three. If you notice, both graphs are created identically. Method one, we graph the entire line for the entire domain, then we erase the portion we don't care about. Method two, you find the endpoint or the corresponding endpoint for each equation, then you graph from there, all right? Again, slopes and y-intercepts are super important as we go through these. Um, yeah, that's it. So we're gonna go on to um, the next one, we're not gonna do both of these, we'll just walk through one, okay? So we'll take a look at B, all right? What we wanna do is we wanna find the equations of the lines. So first things first, I might start in the middle because that kind of looks like the easiest. I know my y-intercept is zero, okay? So the next piece I need is my slope. If I'm looking at this middle line right there, I notice my slope is negative one, all right? So I have my slope and I have my y-intercept. Now I need the restriction. If you notice the scale, each set of um, lines is two. So I know that the middle equation goes from negative one, it's a closed circle, to positive three, which is an open circle. So that's where our line comes from. We look for our slope and our y-intercept, and then we develop the domain restriction based on, um, based on what our open and closed circles are at the end. Now, if I go to the line on the left, okay, looking here, if we were to continue this line through upwards, it looks like my slope is three, okay? So I'm going up three over one. Coincidentally, this would also cross at zero if we were to continue on. Then we need to look at our domain restriction. Well, it looks like that line goes only to the left. So I know that X is gonna be less than, again, it's less than because it's an open circle. And the X value there is negative one. Okay, so we have three X plus zero, and then the domain restriction is X is less than negative one. We can continue on to the third portion. If you notice those lines are parallel, or it's parallel to the blue line. So I know my slope is going to be negative one. I just need to figure out the Y intercept. So I'm gonna backtrack. Using the graph, it looks like my y-intercept is going to be a positive seven. So the equation of the red line is negative one x plus seven. Please note 
that it only works for x values that are greater than or equal to three. Again, it's a closed circle there. So it's greater than or equal to three. And that's how you work from the graph to the function. You look for the slope, the y-intercept, and then you figure out what is the domain restrictions of each part. Continuing on, step functions. They're called step function because they look like stairs. The greatest integer function is an example of one that's pictured off to the right. We're gonna go right into a word problem here as far as things go. An auto repair center charges $50 for uh, the, a part of, our, of the first hour of labor, $40 for any part of each additional hour, okay? So when we look at things, when we are coming up with our function, if they work on our you know, car for let's say five minutes, how much am I gonna get charged? 50 bucks. If they work on it for a half hour, 50 bucks. If they work on it for 45 minutes, 50 bucks. If they work on it for an hour, 50 bucks. So everything up to one hour is going to be $50. And that's where that first step comes into play. If they work on my car for 61 minutes, what am I going to get charged? Well, $50 plus 40 is going to be $90. So between one and two hours, I'm gonna get charged $90. We can continue on. The next hour is going to be another $40. Please note, that if they work on it for two hours, you'll notice two is included with $90. So I'm charged $90 for two hours. If they work two hours in one minute, that's when I jump to the next category, which is 130. And then the next step is gonna be $170, and that's for labor between three and four hours. The nice thing about these, when we go ahead and graph them, pretty straightforward as far as things go. I'm just gonna label that. And then we're gonna go by, say 40s here, 80, 120, 160. And then we're just gonna graph. So it's $50. Notice I have an open circle at zero. If they don't work on my car, I don't get charged. Up to one hour. If they work on my car one hour, perfect. But our next tier is at 90. I plot that horizontal line. My next tier is going to be 130. And then my next tier is going to be 170. And it would continue on and on and on upwards from there. But that's how you graph a step function, really similar to uh, the piecewise functions. Actually, they are piecewise functions, they're just a special category because they look like stairs. All right, continuing on to the last problem, we're looking at absolute value functions. Absolute value functions are always gonna be in the shape of a V, whether it opens up or down. So just kind of keep that in mind. They are essentially piece functions because they are two parts of lines, okay? The one thing to kind of keep in mind is these functions are always going to be in this form. So we have a, whoops, x minus h plus k. They're always going to be in this form. And it's just something to keep in mind from here. But like I said before, when we don't know how to graph something, we'll come back to the general equation here in a second. We want to plug in points, okay? So let's pick some points that, you know, might work, might not work. <laughs> Let's do something like this. So if I plug in negative one to my equation, negative one plus one is zero, zero times a half is zero, zero minus three is negative three. One plus one is two, two times a half, one, one minus three, negative two. Three plus one is four, four times a half is two, two minus three is negative one. Notice. I pick these values because I noticed there is this one half out front. So I wanted this to be, work out to be an even number so it makes my math a lot easier. So negative three plus one 
is negative two. Negative two, the absolute value is two. Two times a half is one. One minus three is negative two. Negative five plus one is negative four. The absolute value is four. Four times a half is two. Two minus three is negative one. So now when we go to our graph, we have five, negative one. We have three, or negative three, negative two. We have negative one, negative three. We have one, uh, negative two. We have three, negative one. And if you notice, we have that V shape on our graph. The question is, can we find any shortcuts to make this easier so I don't have to do this every time? Well, in fact, yes, there is a way to do that. So what we do, if you guys notice, our vertex is at the point one, negative three. If you look here at your equation, bam, bam, your vertex is always gonna be at the value h, k in terms of your equation, okay? What do you notice about this a value? Well, if you look at the slope of the line on the right, my slope is one half, okay? So that's gonna be the slope or the A value is the slope of the right branch of your graph, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. That is a shortcut what's in red, so you don't have to create a table every time. It's your call as far as things go, but if your absolute value graph does not look like a V, you did something wrong, okay? As always, you guys, I know there's homework on the bottom. Just make sure you're doing the assignment that's on the weekly planning guide, because um, it might be different than what's listed there. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available via Schoology Message Discussion Board and Google Meet. Best of luck on 2-6. That is all.